Okay, we're going to start a new video series, and this time, because it's been so long uh, between the series, and there's so many videos on there that I've pretty well just about covered everything there is to be covered, except putting a man on a horse. And I know, you keep asking me about that, and maybe one of these days I'll do it, but not today. So anyway, what I thought I'd do is when we do this one, we're going to start from the very beginning, just like I did when I first started this whole video thing. And uh, we'll just go through and show everything again, all right, in this one series on how to do a cowboy. And we'll be covering all sorts of uh, different techniques and things. So maybe you'll learn something, maybe it'll remind you of something. And we'll just see what happens. Okay, first off, these are the tools I use most of all. My good friend out in California made me this knife, and uh, I really like it. I cherish it because it's my friend made it for me, so it's nice. But this is my main tool. It's just a box knife. I think this one here, I think you can get at Home Depot. It's one of these expensive imports. Uh, I've been using it for, I'd say, close to 30 years now, and uh, it's never failed me yet. So to use this, when you get it, you can buy, uh, well, there's several different kinds of blades for it. Cobalt has some new blades. These are cobalt blades. They say they're titanium coated. A friend gave me these. They're from Lowe's. Lowe's carries this brand. I don't know how many's in here, probably about five or ten, something like that. It says titanium coated. Well, as soon as you do, do what I'm going to show you, you're going to end up taking off that coating. So don't really pay any attention to that. It's, not, it's nothing but uh, making a shiny silver blade gold. Okay? So here I have a knife that has an old blade in it. And I'll show you what I mean by old. I don't know if you can see it very well. Keep moving it, and it won't focus. Hmm? It's not focusing. Anyway, if you can see there, there's scuff marks all along here, caused by a dull blade. So when that happens, you can't resharpen these. You can, uh, you know, run them on your strop a few times, but after a while they'll get they'll get dull from probably banging into stuff on your desk like happens around here all the time. So when that happens, just uh, undo the handle, take it out, and I know this is an old blade so I'm just going to trash it, but normally if I use this end and haven't used in that other end, I just turn it around, stick it back in there and start the process all over again. But this one's shot, so I'm going to throw it away. Now, if you see in here, I went and took some of that plumber's putty, you know, that stuff you rub together and massage till it gets uh, the consistency to where it's going to go off, and forced it down in here. So when I get a new blade and stick it in here, It holds it solid. If you don't do that, that blade's going to wiggle and wobble around, and you don't want that. So I'm going to chuck this thing back in here. What did I forget? That knob. Oh, yeah. Good point. Thank you, Judy. Okay. When you get your uh, knife, it'll have two little knobs up here. Generally, they'll have two little knobs up here to hold the two little indentations on this blade. Well, what I do is I go and I cut off that one, and that allows me to move the blade forward. Gives me maybe about another, you know, eighth of an inch, something like that. But it's enough to make a difference. You can do that if you want. I do it. So, okay, I'm going to chuck it in here. Screw it back together. This first video, we probably won't do any carving. I'm just explaining the different things to you that I do. Don't get your finger caught in there. All right, let's take a test cut here. There's our old cut from that dull blade. 
Here's our new cut. Oh, boy, it, it is dull. See, it's got all kinds of marks in it, just about like it did with the old blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the polishing station and uh, get it to where it's carving ready. All right. Okay, I'm sitting here at my carving station. Got my knife. Got an old cloth wheel that's been in this thing. It's a polishing uh, head for years and years and years. I knew this hard now. And uh, I've got some black diamond. I use this black diamond. You can use Zap or Zam, I think it is. Zam. It's torn off there. Yeah. You can use this stuff. It's all right. I just have this, so I use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and put a little of this on here. And keep your blade just perfectly flat when you put it up here. It's not going to take much. We're just taking off that factory, factory edge. Then over here on the leather stock, I have a little motorized leather stock here. And that should do it. Now if you look at that blade, see I've just buffed off that pretty gold color, so it's, it's not really doesn't really add anything to a steel blade. So anyway, let's go see what we do. Okay, here's our old mark. This is before we took it over there, the thing. Now let's carve a new one and see how it looks. Now you can see that? That's just as smooth. And if you notice, try to get the light on it. See how scuffed this whole chip looks like and how polished this one looks like? That's what you're after. When you want it to work, you can really take the chips off, and this thing will do it. All right? Okie doke. Put that aside. Take this screwdriver and stick it back far away from your knives. And then hopefully you won't have the problem of your knife blades busting in. Okay. Now, for the blank. As you can see here, I have three sizes. All right, like most of you, I started off probably with this one here. Then over time, I worked myself up to this one here, and now I'm carving this one here because with a larger blank, I'm able to do a lot more detail, and uh, in a way, it's easier to carve. Not so much, but it is a little easier, I'll admit that. So, this is four and a half inches long, including the neck, which could be a little shorter, but it's all right. And it's two and three quarter inches wide. Now I have here a piece of uh, basswood that from Heineke Woods, best you can buy. I rec recommend it. It's just, it's good basswood and it's consistent. That's what's good about it. It's always the same and I like that. So anyway, it's not that expensive, $5.80 and I'll turn that around and make quite a bit of money off of it. Okay, so when you get ready to go, you know we can do this sideways, but I'm not going to. This is a three inch piece of wood and it's um, four inches wide, which is fine for this head. I'll have a little left over. So what I'm going to do is you would start out by laying your pattern on the block like that. But here's a hint. If you take your pattern and you twist it just like this, just a little bit, just like that. We can move that back down a little, save some wood. Just like that. And then draw your pattern. Like that. Now when you carve, this is just a generic pattern too. I drew it this way because uh, it gives you the chance for, uh, you know, a mustache if you want one. So 
that you can draw have it you got enough wood there for a mustache but anyway if you lay that pattern over just a little bit when you're carving the facial de the facial details you're going to know that all your chips are going to come off like that right there and you're going to know that back here on the head all these chips are going to come off like that right back there so that's going to work in your benefit rather than up and down granted if you laid it out like this all these chips up front would still come off like that not to the same degree as down here but they would still go up like that but back here they're not going to work that way. Those chips are going to run a run, want to run straight down like that. So you're going to run into trouble. So you'll try to carve up this way, and uh, you know you're playing with, you're playing against the grain of the wood each time. And if you carve a lot like me, you will know that the grain of the wood on this side is going to be different than the grain of the wood on this side, and these little black or brown marks show you that real well. See the grain in this piece of wood is running down like that. And that means the grain on this side is running down like that. And you won't find that out. See if you get a nice piece of wood here, you won't find that out until you start carving. There's no way we can correct that, you know, you've got to do it. You can change things on one side, but you're not going to change things on the other. That's just nature. All right? So we've got our blank drawn out, so now I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and cut it out. Let me draw my lines back in here again. And just show you what's going on here. Say this is a real human. There's the shape of his skull. Now if we were doing a more realistic piece, the shape of his skull would be more like that there. And the neck would come down like this. Okay, but this is a caricature. So we're doing it that way. Alright? If I can remember to cut it out along those lines. So now we'll go over to the bandsaw and cut this out. Okay, I'm over here on my bandsaw. Now, the blade I use is a 3 16th inch, 4 teeth per inch, skip tooth blade, and I get them from Timberwolf. That's the name. I forgot, I forgot it the other day. Timberwolf Blades. They're uh, excellent blades. They'll last you a long time, and the company's really, it's a good company because I got a couple of defective blades once, and I carved it, called them up on the telephone, and man, they didn't question me at all. They sent me brand new blades and that was nice. Okay? So anyway, here we go. I'm going to cut this out. thin slab off of one side and then drill a hole up here and hang that up and then you've got yourself a nice pattern that you can use over and over and over again all right I'll show, like I said I'm showing you everything 
I'm going to cut another slice off of here. Too. There we go. We got our blank. All right. So now it's back to the carbon station. Okay, we've got our blank here. Now, if you looked at the top of a human head, and here I've got a few right here. Here's one here that I'm working on. Don't have any facial details on there. And here's another one here where I've already got the facial details. But if you looked at the top of the head, it's kind of a pie, pie slice shape. So I can take it, you know, mark my center line, take this, and just kind of draw a line down there like that. Get my knife. Now if you want a mustache on your character, leave a little extra there. Don't get it too thin. And when you're carving, don't ever carve out here like this. Get that piece up against your chest. You know, this is part of, part of the exercise too. It's braced up against your chest and it's not going to go anywhere when you're taking these big slices. There, see, we're getting down to the shape we want. Right there. Don't want to take off too much more because you want enough for the ears. The ears still have to be on here. So as we come across here and we draw our jaw up. And we draw our ears on here. There's plenty of material there now for our ears. And we'll be, we'll be doing this in the next video. Because I don't have my high speed line yet. And I can't upload much here if I ever want to watch a movie at night. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we'll start roughing this thing out. So until then, I'll talk to you later.